We got a pretty cool article here today. And before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it all over the place. And if you don't like it, hit the dislike button twice. Remember that, twice. Okay, in the news today from the Herald Bulletin out of Anderson, Indiana. Motorcycle Club aims to dispel perceptions. Outlaws come to Anderson by Tracy L. Miller. All right. Uh, you know, before we get, begin, I got to admit, you know, I did ride with the Pistons. And I just wanted to put out there that a lot of media and a lot of law enforcement really got it wrong. Uh when they talk about uh, the black and white, because I know when I was in, you were not allowed to do any of that craziness, man. None. You'd be kicked out on the street uh, real quick if anybody found out you were doing anything so stupid. So that's why a lot of times I say, you know what, it actually cost you more money to be in a motorcycle club than it, you, you make. So uh, a lot of people have to understand that is just a few people within the clubs that do that. And it's really sad because the club is what gets the bad reputation because of a few. But let's go on and read here. Uh, this is Tony Lepicka. He's standing next to his Harley Davidson at the Outlaws MC Chapter in Anderson. Rock on, Tony. Anyway, Anthony Tony Lepicka sat on a bar stool inside one of three buildings he recently acquired from the former motorcycle club called the Raccoons. Well, there's one I never knew about the Raccoons. Lepicta 67 said he purchased a property to open a chapter of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club, a nationwide organization known as One Percenters. And it's kind of funny how the news actually does talk about how One Percenters came about. The next quote is always there. The American Motorcycle Association helped coin the one percenter term during a motorcycle rally held in 1947 in Hollister. You know, it is kind of funny. Hollister is, you know, the birthplace of everything as far as the break. You know, they had that freaking supposed big uh, thing go down when, you know, Time Magazine, you know, they you know put up that uh, photograph that was uh staged if you will and now hollister wants nothing to do with uh motorcyclists you believe that how much money the bikers bring in the hollister and now they're being dorks uh the organization started at the time that 99 percent of the people at their events were god-fearing and family orientated the other one percent were hard partying hard riding and non-mainstream people okay you know what you can tell this is coming out of indiana you can tell this is coming out of the bible belt just because the way they just put that sentence god fearing and family orientated you know this is uh, right there in the bible section of indiana so Lepicta said the term isn't about the baddest of the bad. They just like to do things in the extreme. Well, people fear the unknown, Lepicta said. Our thing is we ride more. We probably party more. We do everything more than other people do. We are the elite of the elite of the motorcycle clubs in the world. The club's reputation is very well known, especially among law enforcement officers. Quote, the police followed us in the town, said Lepicta. They were looking for warrants, checking out license plates, and doing all that stuff. You know what? And I got to say, man, and law enforcement wonders why there's such friction. When you're you're doing that kind of stuff, you're following people. And I remember debating uh, the sheriff up here in Wisconsin when he was up there just sitting on the corners pulling everybody over and they wonder why uh, there ain't no cooperation they wonder why people don't like them and you know they don't got the best apples in their freaking basket either let me tell you they got some bad ones compared to the motorcycle club stuff but let's go on we are not here to rape pillage and plunder he added now we're gonna go to uh anderson police chief tony wall uh, Waters said he spoke to Picta uh, shortly after his arrival in Anderson. Quote, when I saw the outlaws ride into the city of Anderson, it did raise concerns because I know the legacy behind that motorcycle club, he said. 
Now, that's just like we talked about earlier. A couple bad apples give the clubs a bad name. Next thing you know, it's built on that reputation instead of what the club's really about, biking and brotherhood. They're not out there, you know, doing this, doing that. It's only those few bad apples. The next thing you know, it's them who gets law enforcement all over the freaking place on you. Uh, Water said Lepicta gave him his word that the outlaws are opening a new chapter locally to help improve the quality of life in both the community and its schools. Quote, time will tell, Water said. Now, when uh, AOA gives you his word, he's going to follow through with it. So you guys are actually lucky in Anderson to get a chapter because crime worry to never go anywhere. You know, it's a proven fact that any time a one percenter club moves into the neighborhood, crime goes down big time. And that's something law enforcement cannot accept because, hey, they're driving around with their blue badges and stuff. People don't have any respect for them. But you put a one percenter club clubhouse somewhere and boom, everybody's got respect. They know the rules, no dealing, none of that crap on uh, that block. Anyway, uh, the pick does said the outlaws are not coming to Anderson to, quote, oppress citizens who are not motorcycle riders or other motorcycle clubs. He said the outlaws' history is a long one, originating in 1935 as the Sam McCook's Outlaws. He said they are the oldest motorcycle club in the country, and their members include doctors, lawyers, and successful professionals. Which it does, man. I, I met a couple of the lawyers. I knew some doctors in there. They were pretty cool people, man. Uh, so it ain't just a run-of-the-mill that you're getting into these motorcycle clubs. You do get lawyers. You do get a lot of white-collar professionals that join the One Percenters. Quote, Hells Angels came on board in 1946, Lepicta said. To his knowledge, this is the first time an Outlaws chapter has opened in Anderson. Quote, if we did have one here, we would still be here, he said. We have several hundred all over the world, probably 550 all over the world. That is chapters. Shaking negative perceptions about the outlaws, however, might not be so easy. And, and here they go, in the dead bast. In 2012, FBA agents raided motorcycle clubs belonging to the outlaws in both Fort Pitt, Wayne, where Lepicta was listed as the president and incorporator, and the Indianapolis chapter, and all 42 members of the organization were charged. Federal, well... That brings up a point here. Lepicta wasn't. He's out here and freaking. He, and he was. He's out here opening another one. So again, bad apples. Federal prosecutor said the group was targeted for a variety of offenses, including racketeering, mail fraud, money laundering, extortion, drug charges, wire fraud, witness tampering, and operating an illegal gambling operation. You know how they say illegal gambling operation, man? Yeah, that's because they ain't getting their coin, their tax. That's why it's illegal. I never understood it. The government can freaking put anything out there as far as law. I'm talking here. Let's talk about prostitution. This stuff has been around forever, okay? Since the beginning of the man. And now they outlawed in states because, quote, it don't represent their values is why they did it. And again, it's those citizens that freaking, uh, you know, vote and stuff. They get out there and they put their little freaking almighty uh, attitude and uh, that's so wrong crap in, uh, you know, front of everybody else. And the truth is with prostitution, uh, it's safer when it's legal, okay, because it's controlled and you don't have these girls going out on the street jumping in cars with people they don't know. With a lot of, uh, you know, reputable institutions like that, you're doing background checks on these Johns, you're doing freaking, you got security on these girls. Uh, just look at uh, the Playboy Bunny Ranch out there in Nevada. Now, you got to love Nevada because it's legal. And people don't realize a lot of it used to be legal all the way till up to the eight end of 1800s, man. That's when all uh, these uh, almighty people got it passed. So, you know, that's just going on that. And some of these other offenses you're looking at, Leo, I'd have pull up the Leo news, man, and we'll just go through it and uh, exact same charges. Anyway. Lepicta said he will be the president of the Anderson chapter, which is strategically located halfway between the Fort Wayne and Indianapolis Outlaws. So now it's strategic. 
This just gives them one more p place going from east to west and west to east to refresh themselves, he said. Plus, it was a good move on our part because of the real estate and everything. We got a really good deal. It is 3.8 acres. You imagine the parties that's going to happen on that? Anyway, the acreage will provide uh, room for outlaws during state and national events held by the club in Anderson, he said. The pick to said people might have some misconception about outlaws, but with time, those will be corrected. One of the biggest misconceptions is the organization is a motorcycle gang. Quote, we are a motorcycle club, he stressed. Every motorcycle club in this age has to evolve or they become extinct. Kind of like the dinosaurs, they are not here anymore. Man, now there's some freaking wisdom right now. Right there, a lot of people say it, and it just came out of Lepicta's mouth, the president of Anderson. You have to evolve or you become extinct. You know, the stuff that's happened in the past is the past. Everybody realizes it's 2019 now. Well, at least some people do. Uh, some clubs do anyway. And it's just not worth getting into that, that kind of crap. And, uh, you know, the BMW has led the way in that. You know, just my personal opinion. I might be biased, but that's what I believe. In fact, Lepicta said uh, they want to close the gap between motorcyclists and citizens and help combat bullying and teen suicide rates locally. He said in the past he has taken 50 outlaws with him to escort a student being bullied at school. Rock and roll, and that's something you won't hear in the newspaper because one, it don't sell newspaper, and two, it goes against their narrative to sell more newspapers. But, you know, you imagine 50 outlaws bringing your kid to a school. Now, that's just awesome stuff right there. Quote, we feel it's a precursor to teen suicide. The Picta said of bullying, it's just too much and it's a pandemic. And it is. You know, that's awesome when the one percenter clubs get involved in something like that. Because, you know, we do got back out there and the other ones, uh, you know, Rebels uh, missions out there. We've had them on a couple times. So, it is awesome hearing that the outlaws are out there doing it and i'm hoping other clubs get involved in that too a child did not come out of the womb being a bully he said it's a learning process that they have learned through poor parenting or they learn through other kids they don't come out of the womb as bullies he compared the problem of teen pregnancy before health classes were taught in school well, we have to do the same with bullying. You know, I love how he turned it and made this the issue because that's what they do as a club. They go out there, they help the community, and you know what? It's a much safer damn thing when an MC is in your thing. So, to the citizens out there, if you hear about a club going in there and your representatives are giving problems, go in there and stand up for them because I guarantee your neighborhood's going to be a lot freaking safer. I'm telling you. Uh, let's see here. We have to have a conversation about it. I believe uh, it should be learned at home, but unfortunately, the way the society is today, they are learning the wrong things at home sometimes. Uh, yeah, they're mostly on the freaking video games. The pick also talked about the importance of children. They are our future. We need to do a better job at protecting them. Parents with children who are bullied should first talk with school personnel to address the issues and the parent of the other child involved. You, you know what? That would be a notion. Parents actually talking to the other parents, which doesn't happen a lot nowadays. And these schools who go around and, you, you know, make kids sign contracts and stuff. No, that's not the way it was supposed to be done. Uh, there should be dialogue between them. Not a heated dialogue, but dialogue where they can solve the problem. This is true wisdom right here, man. This is true wisdom. Now, does this guy sound like some kind of freaking drug dealing, uh, racketeering guy? No, he doesn't, man. This is the way most of club members are. It's just those idiots that cause the problems, you know, that bring the club bad news. You know, we have to try and stop kids being tortured. They need to have freedoms, liberty, and happiness just like everyone else. The motorcycle club also plans to participate in local charity events and give back to the community. Not everyone who rides a motorcycle, however, can be a member. Lepicta said some restrictions include no female members or someone who has worked in law enforcement or as a guard in a prison institution. There are people that are in motorcycle clubs. It's a conflict of interest, he said. You can't be one and not the other. A child molester would also never get in. Them chromos, man, knock the hell out of them. 
Anyway, he said there is a year-long hangaround period and background checks are conducted on prospective members. These are just some of the guidelines we use, Lepicta said. It's a brotherhood of like-minded people. You know, that was an awesome story, man. And this is what happens when the club actually comes out to the media. You know, they only had a little bit of what the cops had to say, but the most of the article was all about the freaking club. That's how you do it. You get out there, tell your side of the story, and it just kills the cops' narratives, man. That's the smart move. And you know what? That And, you know, it only had a couple lines of what past members did. But again, it refocused right onto the story about what the outlaws are, what they do for the community, what they, uh, you know, believe in as far as kids being bullied. And this article, I guarantee to the people at Anderson, is going to calm them down a little bit and muddy up the waters what uh, law enforcement are trying to say of course you know it didn't seem like you know the police chief was that you know being a dick or anything he's just going to be on the lookout but this really you know what they got their story out first and if now if the cops are trying to profile and stuff like that the citizens will be like hey wait a second here what's going on so perfect way of freaking doing it putting your side of the story out and hopefully more motorcycle clubs are going to do this kind of stuff so the motorcycle profiling actually goes down. But with that, don't forget to like and uh, share the video, guys. I'll see you on the next